It's hard to find a game developer as revered as From Software in this current climate of video games, delivering back-to-back -back critical darlings that continue to iterate and evolve on the formula that has both birthed and evolved what we now know today as the Souls-like genre. The Soulsborne series in a lot of ways reminds me of that evolution Rockstar had back in the 2000s with the continuous iterations to the open world genre with GTA, Bully and eventually Red Dead. There was a certain type of prestige and discontinued culmination of their previous learnings that would crown and push every iteration forward as something innovative and ambitious. Elden Ring is that crowning achievement for From Software. Whilst it isn't my favourite Soulsborne game, it it's hard not to notice the culmination of everything From Software has learnt in its initial release from Demon Souls up into this most recent expansion, Shadow of the Erd Tree. It is hard to deny that Elden Ring is in fact a masterpiece of a video game. Shadow of the Erd Tree is a fantastic expansion, and it continues to explore this blueprint left by that amazing video game that we all experienced back in the base game that was Elden Ring in 2022, finding creative ways to encourage exploration, new locations with interesting mechanics and a stellar visual splendor. It provides a satisfying expansion that answers the critiques of enemies being too easy in that game and provides an expansive world to explore and a system to go hand in hand to help with the challenge. Whilst it didn't blow me away the same way and to the same degree that Elden Ring did back in 2022, it continuously reminded me just why I love Elden Ring in its entirety and why I do think that game is so masterful and more broadly why I love FromSoft games. Without further delay, I really just want to get into why Shadow of the Erd Tree is an incredible expansion and if you're not already playing it, why you should be. So I'll briefly just touch on the story for Shadow of the Earth Tree. I'm not going to go into any fine details as I don't want to spoil anything for anyone here, but I will just let you know straight away if you enjoyed the form of storytelling that is present in the base game for Elden Ring, then you are going to love Shadow of the Earth Tree. It has everything that you really like and really enjoy in that from the character specific side quests, the environmental storytelling and the different little hidden areas that you have to figure out how to get to and unlock and there is just tons of interesting little subplots here to get into. So if you enjoyed Elden Ring for those aspects, then you are right at home here with Shadow of the Erd Tree. With that being said, there is one thing Shadow of the Erd Tree does very differently in its form of storytelling. And that is the way it kind of loosely paves a story and tells it to the player. I would say that in a way that I feel Elden Ring and many other Soulsborn games really do have this vague way of conveying its story, where if you're not paying attention or you're not reading the items or really taking the universe in, a lot can really go missed and not really understood. Hell, I know many times when I've played these games that a lot of information is just whooshed over my head because I haven't really read into the lore and you know, thank god for people like Vati Video, right? But like with Shadow of the Earth Tree, it's kind of a different experience. Like here in Shadow of the Earth Tree, you have a kind of paved path throughout your journey and there's all these different signs that are laid out that are kind of conveying the thoughts and pro inner monologues with this one particular character. There's different signs that you'll see and then they kind of give into the inner workings of what this particular character that you are following is facing and the journey that they have been making up until that point. I think it's a really interesting way of conveying the story and it's not super handholdy in this way that it gives it all away and really spoils the fun because I know there's a lot of love and charm in that especially for people who are longtime fans of these types of games but I think that in a way for people who aren't so tuned into all the lore and information it is a cool way to kind of keep you engaged and really provide some of that subtext and really want to get you diving into more of it and really understanding what's going on and it gives you a general gist and flow and I really like the way that Shadow of the Earth Tree adds this extra little breadcrumb story in in its main quest line to get the player more invested but with that being said that's my little ramble um I think that overall Shadow of the Earth Tree does a fantastic job at bringing its world to life and I think it ties a neat bow on the experience that is Elden Ring both in its form of storytelling and the environments that it presents and I think it wraps up many of the things for people that were left unanswered. I know that there are still many things that they probably could cover in this universe if they were to choose to make another expansion but I think if this was a stopping point for this game it would be a damn good one. 
So as I mentioned in the story segment, to get Shadow of the Erdtree, you're gonna have to face some pretty key and important bosses that provide a level of challenge. So with that in mind, I'd assume most people watching this understand the core loop and fundamentals of Elden Ring's combat and the way that that whole, whole thing interlocks with the game. So I wanna take this part of the video really focusing more on Shadow of the Erdtree's changes and how it improves and hinders the experience with its open world and exploration. So Elden Ring was developed with its open world and exploration at the forefront, front of mind, making it an expansive world that really does, to me, replicate that labyrinth-like structure of Dark Souls, but on a much more grander scale with planes between castles and dungeons and all of these traditional labyrinths, but an open world plane that, you know, also has its own little puzzles of navigating. There was something truly special about Elden Ring's approach to open world design and exploration. And one of the first videos I made on this channel talks about the beauty of curiosity driven open worlds and Elden Ring was one of my key examples. I recommend checking it out, but the cliff notes are that the best open worlds are the ones that thrive on player curiosity and using landmarks and the sense of discovery to drive the player to explore. There's this sense of epistemic curiosity that is baked into the adventures of the lands between and this sense of discovery and acquisition of knowledge found through your ventures is no different here in Shadow of the Earth Tree. This key method and driver of exploration that was found in the base game lays host in this whole new location known as the Realm of Shadow. This expansion for me really did reignite that sense of wonder and curiosity led exploration that made the lands between such a marvel to explore. From the moment you step out into the realm of shadow, you are greeted with multiple landmarks that'll pull you into a particular direction and have you lost in its wonder. Unlike the base game, Shadow of the Earth Tree will feel very distinct and intentional with where some of the main story landmarks are that'll guide you towards the completion of the main story, similar to what I mentioned in the story segment but it is filled to the brim with caves, dungeons, coves that will pull you away and lead you to some interesting adventures. Not to mention some bosses that are just out in the open that will really either scare you at first, but provide a good sense of challenge and something to come back to. There is just tons of different landmarks that take form in different ways, whether it is a towering furnace, walking around in the plains and the fields, or that big castle sprawling off in the distance. One thing that I noticed with Shadow of the Earth Tree was the amount of platforming puzzles and verticality that had been found and added to some of the different caves and locations in the open world. There were some puzzles like this in the base game, but it was interesting to see them take form here and really provide that different sense of atmosphere and exploration and the different locales that you can just see underneath you. The blue bustling like plants and wildlife and you're like, how do I get there? It feels like this bending like fortress that you're trying to explore, but it is just like this plane that you are openly exploring. One thing that I will say is that the Shadowlands do feel a little bit awkward to navigate at times. You'll find yourself in a particular position not knowing where to go next and how some areas feel like you can see something out of reach and I guess that also provides that sense of wonder of how to get there. But it is kind of like how you are navigating and then you'll have to cut through two different zones to end up warping around to getting to another one. And it can at first feel a little bit jarring or disorienting. But I think once you get your footing and find your footing in the realm of shadow you really will get used to this zone and i think that is something that it whilst it can come off a little confusing at first really does lend to the charm and overall sense of wonder of getting lost in this world you can see something just out of reach and you know you can get there you know it's a part of this world but you just can't quite find your way there one thing that I really do like about Shadow of the Earth Tree is how the Realm of Shadow has doubled down on many of the open world bosses that you'll just see roaming around in the distance, from the mighty towering furnace golems to sometimes just running through a campsite where you'll see a bunch of soldiers fighting a, a dragon, all like going up to the jagged peaks and seeing all these different dragons fighting each other. Like there is a lot of interesting things here and a lot of different interesting encounters that just come out of nowhere and take form. And I think it's something that was really a highlight in the base game, just never know knowing what's around the corner and seeing that just really take form here in that DLC, maybe it's just for me returning to this game after playing it upon release. It's really great to just have that experience again and be like, ah, oh, yes, this is why I love Elden Ring. And it's not just like the same rehashed encounters, they're completely new and it makes it feel like this fresh experience for a DLC, a DLC that'll run you 30 to 40 hours. And it's absolutely crazy just, just how much variety that they've poured into this game from the different biomes that'll just provide a different sense of feeling and all also some mechanical differences to the different types of enemies that you'll face as well. It overall is an absolute crazy experience and I think that the Land of Shadow really is just 
just an interesting area to be inside of and navigating. And it really does bring that sense of wonder that it felt like when you first step out into the lands between. And that's another little point I'd just like to touch on as well. There's that step out moment that many people talk about with these games, whether it's the moment you step out into the open world in something like Breath of the Wild, and whether it's Elden Ring, Shadow of the Earth Tree, despite being an expansion to that game, Elden Ring, has many of these moments where you just step out into a zone and you're like, wow, this this is a wow, like I'm mind blown, like this, this looks amazing, or there's more to this game. And I think that is just, just a testament to how, how great Elden Ring is. And essentially, I would say that Shadow of the Earth Tree is more Elden Ring. And I don't mean that in a negative way, it's just more Elden Ring. And that is what makes it so fantastic because Elden Ring is fantastic. One of the main conversations that surrounds the release of Shadow of the Earth Tree is around the game's difficulty, and this discussion ties into how FromSoft have tackled the element of progression, which is available here in this expansion. So at the core of this experience, like with the base game, you'll be wanting to explore, defeat enemies, acquire new weapons, spells, ashes of wars, skills, all these different things, and you'll want to tailor your character that way. We all know this type of method, but along with that and the runes to level up your stats, you'll get an additional item for leveling up throughout this expansion that is purely effective for your escapades in the Realm of Shadow. These are of course the Shadow Tree Blessings, which I've probably mispronounced as it seems to be one of those situations where everyone has their way of saying it. These blessings essentially are a core staple to this expansion as they will impact the amount of damage you deal and within the Shadowlands and also reduce the amount of damage you take, making this a pivotal component to chase down throughout your journey. I do think that there is something that can be said for how this system ties into progression as I do believe that most players will need to do some degree of exploration and level up their blessings over the course of their playthrough as the Realm of Shadow is challenging and a punishing world. But but to me, in some respects, I feel like that should be the default method of exploring and experiencing Elden Ring's open world, whether it's the base game or the DLC. You should just be going out there and exploring. That's like the thing that I think FromSoft really wanted to push and urge you with this expansion. And I think it's something that I would have done anyway, because that's just how I approached Elden Ring. But I'm still on the fence about how I feel about this approach and having this collectible randomly scattered across the world as a main driver of progression. I think that the way that the game rewarded you in the base game was something that was really interesting and was a really good way of going about it. However, on the flip side, I can totally understand why FromSoft took this approach. There is so many different ways to approach Elden Ring's DLC, and if you are someone who's been playing this game religiously since 2022, you have found numerous ways to break the game and make crazy builds, and there's so many different things, from the incantations, the ashes of war, and the different types of debuffs and effects that you can use, like the blood builds, poison builds, and things like this, and so many different things that have come about even within Shadow of the Earth Tree, and I think that these expansions are just, and different ways and playstyles are really hard to nerf and really hard to balance. So I think that the fragments were really a way to mitigate this and make that build crafting experience still feel unique, but also make the bosses and this experience still feel as challenging as and as intimidating as the base game did. And in a lot of ways, I do think they succeeded, but I do also have to wonder because it also puts a reliance that people will go to the different areas and find these particular fragments. I think by the time I finished this game, I was around like fragment level 18 but I feel like overall I'm interested to see in future what they could do differently with this system because I do think just putting an arbitrary number to leveling up within this DLC it is a little bit of a gripe that I have with it I do think there is a better way to go about it I don't necessarily think it's a bad thing but I just have to wonder like in future if they'll take a different approach to this and what better approaches there would be because I feel like the way of just giving an arbitrary level up there could be something more interesting that they could explore where whether it's having a different style of extension to something like ashes of war or having another different type of ability that really does help assist the combat itself but i think there's many different ways they could go about this and i think that the fragments being there it doesn't really give any downside and i think overall it was a good thing and i think initially that that was one big roadblock and why i think many people found this game really hard and were saying it was ridiculously hard was the fact that they hadn't really gone out and explored and probably got stuck on a boss, I will say that there is, even when you are leveled up with high levels of fragments, some bosses that will still kick your ass and are quite challenging. And that leads me to talking about the bosses in the Realm of Shadow in Shadow of the Earth Tree. 
Now I would like to touch on one of the main courses that comes when playing a Souls-like game, and that is of course the allure, the sense of challenge and difficulty that arises from its boss encounters. The level of mechanics, multi-phases, meaningful challenges that can arise from a particular encounter. And man, Shadow of the Earth Tree is no different and in many ways is the epitome of this. The various bosses of Shadow of the Earth Tree provide a good sense of challenge, asking the players to recall many of their learnings from the base game and are designed to counteract much of the cheese and things that people have built and constructed over the years. An example of this that I can think of is the fact that many of these bosses will rush you immediately as you enter the room, not giving you time to summon that mimic tier or buff yourself with any debuffs and stats or drinking potions to just get yourself prepped for the fight. I'm no Soulsborne expert by any means, and you can probably tell that from my gameplay alone, but I've made my way through many of the games and found Shadow of the Earth Tree to provide a good challenge that will knock you on your ass many times, and if you haven't been prepared for this and you aren't prepping and collecting those fragments, then man, this will be a very hard hitting and like challenge, but I think there's a lot of ways to mitigate those difficulties, and I think it does just come with perseverance and practice. Another thing that I've noticed here is that the bosses are way more aggressive they won't wait for you to grease your weapon, summon a spirit, and they are much more ruthless than their base game counterparts. They offer a real threat here and really do serve as the culmination of all the lessons learned throughout what is the Elden Ring experience. Topping it off with the final boss that will put hairs on your chest. I can understand why people are calling these encounters too difficult, but I feel that From Software have for the most part done a good job trying to balance this game given the sheer amount of tools and builds that are available to the player. It really is a tug of war. You have veteran players that are rinsing enemy health bars and then on the other side you have novice players who can't really make it past the early encounters that are struggling and I think that this DLC really does hinge on how much exploration you really do go out and do and how many of those blessings you get and I think that in a lot of ways this game is designed to be challenging and that's the lore of the games but this expansion in particular is meant to be extra challenging for that fact that it is an expansion it's something that builds upon the roots and foundations of the base game so you don't just want to like go in and just clear all these bosses in three hours. I think Kai Sennett put it in the best when he said, like, people have been waiting two years for this. You just don't want to go in there and have no challenge. And I think that that's what this expansion ultimately is. Like, there is so much there to really just get into and and tackle in terms of side content and all these bosses they will put you in your place if you just try to rush to them and if you're not skilled enough or challenged enough there is plenty of stuff to do before going back to them and i think that you can really just sit down and learn these bosses and i think anyone can really just beat beat and best them if they put their mind to it it did i'll be honest it took me time to beat that final boss a couple of days he was really challenging and in terms of many of these games that i played i would say he was a really hard boss for me but overall nothing beats that satisfaction of when you finally accomplished it. And I think overall, the, the boss encounters in Shadow of the Earth Tree have been very interesting. I can understand the frustrations with their challenge, but I think with time and even some of the stuff I've seen as the weeks unfold, there has been so many people finding builds and ways to just rinse his health bar too. And I think that's just a sentiment to the beauty of these types of games and the way that they're constructed and designed. But I know that that's a bit of a contentious point. I'd be, I'd be interested to hear what you think in the comments, but that is just how I feel. So to bring this video to a close, I'd just like to say the whole Elden Ring experience is a lightning in the bottle moment that is the culmination of all of FromSoft's learnings throughout the years, from the original Demon Souls to the release of Shadow of the Earth Tree. It captures the magic of exploring an open world begging to be explored, and Shadow of the Earth Tree really just doubles down on many of the lessons learned from the base game. I don't feel like Shadow of the Earth Tree really does differentiate itself too much from Elden Ring, but I don't think it really needed to to be a successful expansion. I think it just needed to provide more Elden Ring. And in comparison to its contemporaries, the other types of expansions that we see, this truly is an outlier and one that is exceptional. With 30 to 40 hours worth of content, just, it is insane. It is a scale, on a scale that we rarely really see. I mean, there are other games that really do provide compelling narratives and long expansions of substance, but I do think that this expansion for Elden Ring really is, in a sense, like a massive extension to 
to that base game. And I feel like people coming into this and playing it for the first time with the base game and then Shadow of the Earth Tree expanded really are just in for a treat with just how incredible this whole world is and how it has been constructed. And in many ways, I do feel like Shadow of the Earth Tree is a perfect send off for Elden Ring. I mean, look, I've seen many people saying they want another expansion for this, and I would be happy if we got another expansion, but I can understand this being the finale, and I think that if this is where the story for Elden Ring wraps itself up and they move on to their next experience, well, it's a great stopping point. And I think that overall, Shadow of the Earth Tree is a masterclass experience that really just further accentuates the beauty, creativity, and fun gameplay that we have seen through FromSoft's games over the years, and it just further articulates why Elden Ring was the game of the year of 2022 and why this will be one of the best experiences of 2024. I know this review has been a little different to what I've done in the past and I'm wanting to do a review fully covering everything and deconstructing just how incredible Elden Ring is at some point but I hope that you've enjoyed this video and Shadow of the Earth Tree really has been a great experience to play through, a challenging one, a fun one and if you're still on the fence about playing it and wondering if it's for you well I can just say yes absolutely give it a try especially if you played these types of games before. If you are someone new to the genre, I think Elden Ring really is a great starting point. It is something that can open your mind to a lot of the different ideas that this, these types of games really do accentuate, that they show off, and it does it very well. And I think this blueprint is just, it encapsulates everything that you'll see in all the subsequent from soft games when you go back and play them. Elden Ring is a great jumping on point for new and veteran players and it's a great game to play and I think Shadow of the Erd Tree is a great experience that encompasses all of the highlights and hallmarks of this genre. So yeah, I highly recommend checking out Elden Ring Shadow of the Erd Tree. Thank you for watching.